Shia Arabic shit shisha from shisha to Ali adherent of Ali also transliterated Shia and Shia is a branch of Islam which holds that the Islamic prophet Muhammad designated Ali ibn Abi Talib as his successor and the Imam leader after him most notably at the event of Ghadir Qum but was prevented from the caliphate as a result of the incident at Saqifah this view primarily contrasts with that of Sunni Islam, whose adherents believe that Muhammad did not appoint a successor and consider Abu Bakr, who they claim was appointed caliph through a shura, i.e. community consensus in Saqifah, to be the first rightful caliph after the Prophet. Unlike the first three Rashidun caliphs, Ali was from the same clan as Muhammad, Banu Hashim. Adherents of Shia Islam are called Shias of Ali, Shias or the Shia as a collective or Shi'i or Shiite individually. Shia Islam is the second largest branch of Islam. In 2009, Shia Muslims constituted 10% of the world's Muslim population. Twelver Shia is the largest branch of Shia Islam, with 2012 estimates saying that 85% of Shias were Twelvers. Shia Islam is based on the Quran and the message of Muhammad attested in Hadith, and on Hadith taught by their Imams. Shia consider Ali to have been divinely appointed as the successor to Muhammad, and as the first Imam. The Shia also extend this Imama doctrine to Muhammad's family, the Al Al Bayt, the people, family of the house, and some individuals among his descendants, known as Imams, who they believe possess special spiritual and political authority over the community, infallibility, and other divinely ordained traits. Although there are many Shia subsects, modern Shia Islam has been divided into three main groupings, Twelvers, Ismailis and Zaydis, with Twelver Shia being the largest and most influential group among Shia. Etymology <inaudible> 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 The word Shia Arabic, shit shish a, i a, means followers and is the short form of the historic phrase shish atu ali, shit li i atu ali, meaning followers of Ali, faction of Ali, or party of Ali. Shia and Shiism are the forms used in English, while Shiite or Shiite, as well as Shia, refer to its adherents. Terminology <inaudible> <inaudible> The term for the first time was used at the time of Muhammad. At present, the word refers to the Muslims who believe that the leadership of the community after Muhammad belongs to Ali and his successors. Nabakti states that the term Shia refers to a group of Muslims that at the time of Muhammad and after him regarded Ali as the Imam and Caliph. al sharistani expresses that the term Shia refers to those who believe that Ali is designated as the heir, Imam and Caliph by Muhammad and also Ali's authority never goes out of his descendants. For the Shia, this conviction is implicit in the Quran and history of Islam. Shia scholars emphasize that the notion of authority is linked to the family of the prophets as the verses 333, 34 shows. Indeed, God chose Adam and Noah and the family of Abraham and the family of Imran over the world's 33 descendants, some of them from others. And God is hearing and knowing. 34. Shia search for the true meaning of the revelation to get the purpose of the life blood and the human destiny. <laughs> Beliefs Imamate Topic Succession of Ali Shia Muslims believe that just as a prophet is appointed by God alone, only God has the prerogative to appoint the successor to his prophet. They believe God chose Ali to be Muhammad's successor, infallible, the first caliph, Khalifa, head of state of Islam. The Shias believe that Muhammad designated Ali as his successor by God's command Eid al -Ghadr. Ali was Muhammad's first cousin and closest living male relative as well as his son-in-law, having married Muhammad's daughter Fatima. The event of Dhul Ashira Muhammad invited people to Islam in secret for three years before he started inviting them publicly. In the fourth year of Islam, when Muhammad was commanded to invite his closer relatives to come to Islam he gathered the Banu Hashim clan in a ceremony. 
At the banquet, he was about to invite them to Islam when Abu Lahab interrupted him, after which everyone left the banquet. The Prophet ordered Ali to invite the forty people again. The second time, Muhammad announced Islam to them and invited them to join. He said to them, I offer thanks to God for his mercies. I praise God, and I seek his guidance. I believe in him and I put my trust in him. I bear witness that there is no God except God, he has no partners, and I am his messenger. God has commanded me to invite you to his religion by saying, and warn thy nearest kinsfolk. I, therefore, warn you, and call upon you to testify that there is no God but God, and that I am his messenger. O ye sons of Abdul Muttalib, no one ever came to you before with anything better than what I have brought to you. By accepting it, your welfare will be assured in this world and in the hereafter. Who among you will support me in carrying out this momentous duty? Who will share the burden of this work with me? Who will respond to my call? Who will become my vicegerent, my deputy and my wazir? Ali was the only one to answer Muhammad's call. Muhammad told him to sit down, saying, Wait! Perhaps someone older than you might respond to my call. Muhammad then asked the members of Banu Hashim a second time. Once again, Ali was the only one to respond, and again, Muhammad told him to wait. Muhammad then asked the members of Banu Hashim a third time. Ali was still the only volunteer. This time, Ali's offer was accepted by Muhammad. Muhammad drew Ali close, pressed him to his heart, and said to the assembly, This is my wazir, my successor and my vicegerent. Listen to him and obey his commands. In another narration, when Muhammad accepted Ali's eager offer, Muhammad threw up his arms around the generous youth, and pressed him to his bosom, and said, Behold my brother, my vizier, my vicegerent. Let all listen to his words, and obey him. Sir Richard Burton writes about the banquet in his 1898 book, saying, It won for Muhammad a proselyte worth a thousand sabers in the person of Ali, son of Abu Talib. The event of Ghadir Qum The event of Ghadir Qum is an event that took place in March 632. While returning from the Hajj pilgrimage, the Islamic prophet Muhammad gathered all the Muslims who were with him and gave a long sermon. This sermon included Muhammad's declaration that, To whomsoever I am Mala, Ali is also their Mala. After the sermon, Muhammad instructed everyone to pledge allegiance to Ali. Shia Muslims believe this event to be the official appointment of Ali as Muhammad's successor. A portion of the sermon Muhammad delivered is as follows O people! Reflect on the Quran and comprehend its verses. Look into its clear verses and do not follow its ambiguous parts, for by God, none shall be able to explain to you its warnings and its mysteries, nor shall anyone clarify its interpretation, other than the one that I have grasped his hand, brought up beside myself, and lifted his arm, the one about whom I inform you that whomever I am his master Mala, then Ali is his master Mala, and he is Ali ibn Abi Talib, my brother, the executor of my will Wasayi, whose appointment as your guardian and leader has been sent down to me from God, the Mighty and the Majestic. After the conclusion of Muhammad's sermon, the Muslims were commanded to pledge their allegiance to Ali. Umar was reportedly the first to give the oath of allegiance to Ali. Shia Muslims believe this to be Muhammad's appointment of Ali as his successor. Topic Ali's Caliphate When Muhammad died in 632 CE, Ali and Muhammad's closest relatives made the funeral arrangements. While they were preparing his body, Abu Bakr, Umar, and Abu Ubaidah ibn al-Jarrah met with the leaders of Medina and elected Abu Bakr as caliph. Ali did not accept the caliphate of Abu Bakr and refused to pledge allegiance to him. This is indicated in both Sunni and Shia Sahih and authentic hadith. Ibn Qutayba, a 9th century Sunni Islamic scholar narrates of Ali, I am the servant of God and the brother of the messenger of God. I am thus more worthy of this office than you. I shall not give allegiance to you Abu Bakr and Umar when it is more proper for you to give bayah to me. You have seized this office from the Ansar using your tribal relationship to the Prophet as an argument against them. Would you then seize this office from us, the al al bayt by force? Did you not claim before the Ansar that you were more worthy than they of the Caliphate because Muhammad came from among you but Muhammad was never from Abu Bakr family and thus they gave you leadership and surrendered command? I now contend against you with the same argument, it is we who are more worthy of the messenger of God, living or dead. 
Give us our due right if you truly have faith in God, or else bear the charge of willfully doing wrong. Umar, I will not yield to your commands, I shall not pledge loyalty to him. Ultimately Abu Bakr said, O oh, Ali. If you do not desire to give your bayah, I am not going to force you for the same. Ali's wife, and daughter of Muhammad, Fatima, refused to pledge allegiance to Abu Bakr and remained angry with him until she died due to the issues of Fadiq and her inheritance from her father and the situation of Umar at Fatima's house. This is stated in Sahih Sunni Hadith, Sahih Bukhari and Sahih Muslim. Fatima did not at all pledge allegiance or acknowledge or accept the caliphate of Abu Bakr. Almost all of Banu Hashim, Muhammad's clan and many of the Sahaba, had supported Ali's cause after the demise of the Prophet whilst others supported Abu Bakr. It was not until the murder of the third caliph, Uthman, in 657 CE that the Muslims in Medina in desperation invited Ali to become the fourth caliph as the last source, and he established his capital in Kufa in present-day Iraq. Ali's rule over the early Muslim community was often contested, and wars were waged against him. As a result, he had to struggle to maintain his power against the groups who betrayed him after giving allegiance to his succession, or those who wished to take his position. This dispute eventually led to the First Fitna, which was the first major civil war within the Islamic Caliphate. The Fitna began as a series of revolts fought against Ali ibn Abi Talib, caused by the assassination of his political predecessor, Uthman ibn Affan. While the rebels who accused Uthman of prejudice affirmed Ali's caliphate, they later turned against him and fought him. Ali ruled from 656 CE to 661 CE, when he was assassinated while prostrating in prayer Sujud. Ali's main rival Muawiyah then claimed the caliphate. <laughs> Hassan ibn Ali Upon the death of Ali, his elder son Hassan became leader of the Muslims of Kufa, and after a series of skirmishes between the Kufa Muslims and the army of Muawiyah, Hassan agreed to cede the caliphate to Muawiyah and maintain peace among Muslims upon certain conditions. The enforced public cursing of Ali, e.g. during prayers, should be abandoned. Muawiyah should not use tax money for his own private needs. There should be peace, and followers of Hassan should be given security and their rights. Muawiyah will never adopt the title of Amir al muminin Muawiyah will not nominate any successor. Hassan then retired to Medina, where in 670 CE he was poisoned by his wife Jada bint al Ashith ibn Qiz, after being secretly contacted by Muawiyah, who wished to pass the caliphate to his own son Yazid and saw Hassan as an obstacle. <laughs> Hussein Hussein, Ali's younger son and brother to Hassan, initially resisted calls to lead the Muslims against Muawiyah and reclaim the caliphate. In 680 CE, Muawiyah died and passed the caliphate to his son Yazid, and breaking the treaty with Hassan ibn Ali. Yazid asked Hussein to swear allegiance bayah to him. Ali's faction, having expected the caliphate to return to Ali's line upon Muawiyah's death, saw this as a betrayal of the peace treaty and so Hussein rejected this request for allegiance. There was a groundswell of support in Kufa for Hussein to return there and take his position as caliph and imam, so Hussein collected his family and followers in Medina and set off for Kufa. En route to Kufa, he was blocked by an army of Yazid's men which included people from Kufa near Karbala modern Iraq, and Hussein and approximately 72 of his family and followers were killed in the Battle of Karbala. The Shias regard Hussein as a martyr shaheed, and count him as an imam from the al al -Bayt. They view Hussein as the defender of Islam from annihilation at the hands of Yazid the first Hussein as the last Imam following Ali whom all Shia sub-branches mutually recognize. The Battle of Karbala is often cited as the definitive break between the Shia and Sunni sects of Islam, and is commemorated each year by Shia Muslims on the day of Ashura. Imamate of the al al -Bayt. Most of the early Shia differed only marginally from mainstream Sunnis in their views on political leadership, but it is possible in this sect to see a refinement of Shia doctrine. Early Sunnis traditionally held that the political leader must come from the tribe of Muhammad—namely, the Quraysh tribe. The Zaydis narrowed the political claims of Ali's supporters, claiming that not just any descendant of Ali would be eligible to lead the Muslim community but only those males directly descended from Muhammad through the union of Ali and Fatima. 
But during the Abbasid revolts, other Shia, who came to be known as Imamiyya followers of the Imams, followed the theological school of Imam Jafar al-Sadiq, himself the great-great-grandson of Muhammad's son-in-law Imam Ali. They asserted a more exalted religious role for imams and insisted that, at any given time, whether in power or not, a single male descendant of Ali and Fatima was the divinely appointed imam and the sole authority, in his time, on all matters of faith and law. To those Shia, love of the imams and of their persecuted cause became as important as belief in God's oneness and the mission of Muhammad. Later, most of the Shia, including Twelver and Ismaili, became imamis. Imami Shia believe that Imams are the spiritual and political successors to Muhammad. Imams are human individuals who not only rule over the community with justice, but also are able to keep and interpret the divine law and its esoteric meaning. The words and deeds of Muhammad and the Imams are a guide and model for the community to follow. As a result, they must be free from error and sin, and must be chosen by divine decree, or nas, through Muhammad. According to this view, there is always an Imam of the age, who is the divinely appointed authority on all matters of faith and law in the Muslim community. Ali was the first Imam of this line, the rightful successor to Muhammad, followed by male descendants of Muhammad through his daughter Fatima. This difference between following either the Al Al Bayt, Muhammad's family and descendants, or Caliph Abu Bakr has shaped Shia and non-Shia views on some of the Quranic verses, the Hadith, narrations from Muhammad, and other areas of Islam. For instance, the collection of Hadith venerated by Shia Muslims is centered on narrations by members of the Al-Al-Bayt and their supporters, while some Hadith by narrators not belonging to or supporting the Al-Al-Bayt are not included. Those of Abu Huraira, for example, Ibn Asakir in his Tariq Kabir and Mutaki in his Kanzul Umma report that Caliph Umar lashed him, rebuked him and forbade him to narrate Hadith from Muhammad. Umar said. Because you narrate hadith in large numbers from the Holy Prophet, you are fit only for attributing lies to him. That is, one expects a wicked man like you to utter only lies about the Holy Prophet, so you must stop narrating hadith from the Prophet, otherwise, I will send you to the land of Dus. A clan in Yemen, to which Abu Huraira belonged, according to Sunnis, Ali was the fourth successor to Abu Bakr, while the Shia maintained that Ali was the first divinely sanctioned Imam or successor of Muhammad. The seminal event in Shia history is the martyrdom in 680 CE at the Battle of Karbala of Ali's son Hussein ibn Ali, who led a non-allegiance movement against the defiant caliph 71 of Hussein's followers were killed as well. Hussein came to symbolize resistance to tyranny. It is believed in Twelver and Ismaili Shia Islam that AQL, divine wisdom, was the source of the souls of the prophets and imams and gave them esoteric knowledge called hikmah and that their sufferings were a means of divine grace to their devotees. Although the imam was not the recipient of a divine revelation, he had a close relationship with God, through which God guides him, and the imam, in turn, guides the people. Imamate, or belief in the divine guide, is a fundamental belief in the Twelver and Ismaili Shia branches and is based on the concept that God would not leave humanity without access to divine guidance. <laughs> imam of the time, last Imam of the Shia The Mahdi is the prophesied redeemer of Islam who will rule for seven, nine or nineteen years according to differing interpretations before the day of judgment and will rid the world of evil. According to Islamic tradition, the Mahdi's tenure will coincide with the second coming of Jesus Christ Isa, who is to assist the Mahdi against the Masi ad-Dajjal literally, the false messiah or antichrist. Jesus, who is considered the Masi Messiah in Islam, will descend at the point of a white arcade, east of Damascus, dressed in yellow robes with his head anointed. He will then join the Mahdi in his war against the Dajjal, where Jesus will slay Dajjal and unite mankind. Theology The Shia Islamic faith is vast and inclusive of many different groups. Shia theological beliefs and religious practices, such as prayers, slightly differ from the Sunnis. While all Muslims pray five times daily, Shias have the option of combining Zuhr with Asr and Maghrib with Isha, as there are three distinct times mentioned in the Quran. The Sunnis tend to combine only under certain circumstances. Shia Islam embodies a completely independent system of religious interpretation and political authority in the Muslim world. 
The original Shia identity referred to the followers of Imam Ali, and Shia theology was formulated in the 2nd century AH, or after Hijra 8th century CE. The first Shia governments and societies were established by the end of the 3rd century AH, 9th century CE. The 4th century AH, 10th century CE has been referred to by Louis Massignon as the Shiite Ismaili century in the history of Islam. Hadith The Shia believe that the status of Ali is supported by numerous hadith, including the hadith of the pond of cum, hadith of the two weighty things, hadith of the pen and paper, hadith of the invitation of the close families, and hadith of the twelve successors. In particular, the hadith of the cloak is often quoted to illustrate Muhammad's feeling towards Ali and his family by both Sunni and Shia scholars. Shias prefer hadith attributed to the al al bayt and close associates, and have their own separate collection of hadiths. Profession of faith The Shia version of the Shahada, the Islamic profession of faith, differs from that of the Sunni. The Sunni Shahada states there is no God except God, Muhammad is the Messenger of God, but to this the Shia append Ali as the Wali custodian of God. This phrase embodies the Shia emphasis on the inheritance of authority through Muhammad's lineage. The three clauses of the Shia Shahada thus address Tawhid the unity of God, Nubuwa the prophethood of Muhammad, and Imama imamate, the leadership of the faith. The basis of Ali as the Wali is taken from a specific verse of the Quran. A more detailed discussion of this verse is available. Topic: <inaudible> Infallibility. Isma is the concept of infallibility or divinely bestowed freedom from error and sin. In Islam, Muslims believe that Muhammad and other prophets in Islam possessed isma. Twelver and Ismaili Shia Muslims also attribute the quality to Imams as well as to Fatima, daughter of Muhammad, in contrast to the Zaydi, who do not attribute Isma to the Imams. Though initially beginning as a political movement, infallibility and sinlessness of the Imams later evolved as a distinct belief of non Zaydi Shiism. According to Shia theologians, infallibility is considered a rational necessary precondition for spiritual and religious guidance. They argue that since God has commanded absolute obedience from these figures they must only order that which is right. The state of infallibility is based on the Shia interpretation of the verse of purification. Thus, they are the most pure ones, the only immaculate ones preserved from, and immune to, all uncleanness. It does not mean that supernatural powers prevent them from committing a sin, but due to the fact that they have absolute belief in God, they refrain from doing anything that is a sin, they also have a complete knowledge of God's will. They are in possession of all knowledge brought by the angels to the prophets Nabi and the messengers Rasul. Their knowledge encompasses the totality of all times. They thus act without fault in religious matters. Shias regard Ali as the successor of Muhammad not only ruling over the community in justice, but also interpreting Islamic practices and its esoteric meaning. Hence he was regarded as being free from error and sin infallible, and appointed by God by divine decree nas to be the first imam. Ali is known as perfect man, al Insan al Kamil, similar to Muhammad, according to Shia viewpoint. Occultation The occultation is a belief in some forms of Shia Islam that a messianic figure, a hidden imam known as the Mahdi, will one day return and fill the world with justice. According to the Twelver Shia, the main goal of Mahdi will be to establish an Islamic state and to apply Islamic laws that were revealed to Muhammad. Some Shia, such as the Zaydi and Nazari Ismaili, do not believe in the idea of the occultation. The groups which do believe in it differ as to which lineage of the imamate is valid, and therefore which individual has gone into occultation. They believe there are many signs that will indicate the time of his return. Twelver Shia Muslims believe that the Mahdi the twelfth Imam, Muhammad al-Mahdi is already on earth, is in occultation and will return at the end of time. Fatimid, Bora, Dawoodi Bora believe the same but for their 21st Tayyib, whereas Sunnis believe the future Mahdi has not yet arrived on earth. <laughs> <laughs> Inheritance 
It is believed that the armaments and sacred items of all of the prophets, including Muhammad, were handed down in succession to the imams of all al bayt In Kitab al-Kafi, Jafar al-Sadiq mentions that, "...with me are the arms of the Messenger of Allah. It is not disputable." Further, he claims that with him is the sword of the Messenger of God, his coat of arms, his lamam and his helmet. In addition, he mentions that with him is the flag of the Messenger of God, the Victorious. With him is the staff of Moses, the ring of Solomon, son of David, and the tray on which Moses used to offer his offerings. With him is the name that whenever the Messenger of God would place it between the Muslims and pagans no arrow from the pagans would reach the Muslims. With him is the similar object that angels brought. Al Sadiq also narrates that the passing down of armaments is synonymous to receiving the imamate leadership, similar to how the ark in the house of the Israelites signaled prophethood. Imam Ali al Rida narrates that wherever the armaments among us would go, knowledge would also follow and the armaments would never depart from those with knowledge. <laughs> Topic. History Historians dispute the origin of Shia Islam, with many Western scholars positing that Shiism began as a political faction rather than a truly religious movement. Other scholars disagree, considering this concept of religious political separation to be an anachronistic application of a Western concept. Following the Battle of Karbala, 680 AD, as various Shia affiliated groups diffused in the emerging Islamic world, several nations arose based on a Shia leadership or population. Idrisids 788-985 CE, a Zaydi dynasty in what is now Morocco Euclids 990-1096 CE, a Shia Arab dynasty with several lines that ruled in various parts of Al Jazeera, northern Syria and Iraq. Bayids 934-1055 CE, at its peak consisted of large portions of modern Iraq and Iran. Il Khanate (1256–1335), a Mongol Khanate established in Persia in the 13th century, considered a part of the Mongol Empire. The Il Khanate was based originally on Genghis Khan's campaigns in the Khwarezmid Empire in 1219 to 1224, and founded by Genghis's grandson Hulagu in territories which today comprise most of Iran, Iraq, Afghanistan, Turkmenistan, Armenia, Azerbaijan, Georgia, Turkey, and Pakistan. The Ilkhanate initially embraced many religions, but was particularly sympathetic to Buddhism and Christianity. Later Ilkhanate rulers, beginning with Ghazan in 1295, embraced Islam his brother Oljaitu promoted Shia Islam. Nabat Khan accepted Islam under the guidance of Mughal general Baram Khan's son Abdul Rahim Khan I Khanna. Bamanis (1347–1527 CE), a Shia Muslim state of the Deccan in southern India and one of the great medieval Indian kingdoms. Bamanid Sultanate was the first independent Islamic kingdom in South India. Topic: <laughs> North Africa. Idrisid Dynasty (780–985 CE). Zaidi. Fatimid Caliphate 1171 CE Ismaili Banu Khans 1004 to 1412 CE Ismaili Topic <inaudible> Iran and Caucasus Justinids 791 to 974 CE Zaidi Alavids 864-929 CE. Zaidi Aishanids 912-961 CE. Zirid Dynasty 928-1043 CE. Bayad Dynasty 934-1062 CE. Zaidi, later converted to Twelver Hazanwayhid 959-1015 CE. Kakuids 1008-1051 CE Nazari Ismaili State 1090-1256 CE Nazari Sarbadars 1332-1386 CE Twelver Injuids 1335-1357 CE Twelver Marishian 1359-1582 CE Kara Koyunlu 1375 to 1468 CE 
Mushashaya dynasty 1436 to 1729 CE Mushashaya Safavid dynasty 1501 to 1736 CE 12er Baku Khanate 1753 to 1806 CE Erevan Khanate 1604 to 1828 CE Khanate 1747 to 1804 CE Javad Khanate 1747 to 1805 CE Talish Khanate 1747 to 1828 CE Nakhchivan Khanate 1747 to 1813 CE Karabakh Khanate 1747 to 1822 CE Zand Dynasty 1750 to 1794 CE Qajar Dynasty 1785 to 1925 CE Pahlavi Dynasty 1925 to 1979 CE Topic Arabian Peninsula Banu Ukadir 8651066 CE Zaidi Topic Bahrain Carmations 900-1073 CE. Carmations. Uyunid Dynasty 1073 to 1253 CE. Twelver. Usfrids 1253 to 1320 CE. Twelver. Jarwanid Dynasty 1305 to 1487 CE. Ismaili and Twelver. Jabrids 1516th century. Twelver. Topic Yemen Rasids eight nine three one nine seven O C E Zaidi Sulehid Dynasty ten forty seven to eleven thirty eight C E Ismaili Hamdanids Yemen ten ninety nine to eleven seventy four C E Ismaili Zarayids ten eighty three to eleven seventy four C E Ismaili Mutawakalite Kingdom of Yemen 1918 to 1970 CE Topic <inaudible> Europe Kalbids 948 AD Hamadid Dynasty 1016 to 1073 AD Zaidi Topic Syria and Iraq Hamdanid dynasty 890-1004 CE Bani Asad 961-1163 CE Central and Southern Iraq Numirids 990-1081 CE Eastern Syria and Southeastern Turkey Marwanids 990-1085 CE Ukalid dynasty 990-1169 CE Murtasids 1024 to 1080 CE Topic Asia Minor Modern Turkey Eretnids 1328 to 1381 CE Danishmens 1071 to 1178 CE Beylik of Erzincan 1379 to 1410 CE Topic India Bahmani Sultanate 1347 to 1527 CE Janpur Sultanate 1394 to 1479 CE Bidar Sultanate 1489 to 1619 CE Barar Sultanate 1490 to 1572 CE Ahmadnagar Sultanate 1490 to 1636 CE Qutb Shahi Dynasty 1512 to 1687 CE Adil Shahi Dynasty 1490 to 1686 CE Najm i Sani Dynasty 1658 CE Nawab of Rampur 1719 to 1949 CE Nawabs of Oudh 1722 to 1858 CE 
Nawabs of Bengal 1757 to 1880 CE Talpur dynasty 1783 to 1843 CE Hunza princely state 1500s 1974 CE Nagar princely state 14th century 1974 CE Topic Southeast Asia Daya Pasai 1128 to 1285 CE Bundar Kalaba Moira Malaya Kanto Kambar Rabaraman East Africa Kilwa Sultanate 957-1506 CE Fatimid Caliphate Fatimids 909 CE, controlled much of North Africa, the Levant, parts of Arabia and Mecca and Medina. The group takes its name from Fatima, Muhammad's daughter, from whom they claim descent. In 909 CE the Shiite military leader Abu Abdallah al-Shi'i, overthrew the Sunni ruler in northern Africa, which began the Fatimid regime. Jahar General Arabic, Jachar Florida. 966 d. 992 was a Fatimid general. Under the command of Caliph al-Mu'is, he led the conquest of North Africa and then of Egypt, founded the city of Cairo and the great Al-Azhar Mosque. A Greek slave by origin, he was freed by al-Mu'is. <laughs> Safavids A major turning point in Shia history was the Safavid dynasty 1501 in Persia. This caused a number of changes in the Muslim world. The ending of the relative mutual tolerance between Sunnis and Shias that existed from the time of the Mongol conquests onwards and the resurgence of antagonism between the two groups. Initial dependence of Shiite clerics on the state followed by the emergence of an independent body of ulama capable of taking a political stand different from official policies. The growth and importance of Iranian centers of religious learning and change from Twelver Shiism being a predominantly Arab phenomenon. The growth of the Akbari school which preached that only the Quran, Hadith are to be basis for verdicts, rejecting the use of reasoning, with the fall of the Safavids, the state in Persia, including the state system of courts with government-appointed judges QADIS became much weaker. This gave the Sharia courts of Muaytahids an opportunity to fill the legal vacuum and enabled the ulama to assert their judicial authority. The Usuli school also increased in strength at this time. Topic: Community. Topic: Demographics. According to Shia Muslims, one of the lingering problems in estimating Shia population is that unless Shia form a significant minority in a Muslim country, the entire population is often listed as Sunni. The reverse, however, has not held true, which may contribute to imprecise estimates of the size of each sect. For example, the 1926 rise of the House of Saud in Arabia brought official discrimination against Shia. Shiites are estimated to be 21% of the Muslim population in South Asia, although the total number is difficult to estimate due to that reason. It is estimated that 10% of the world's Muslims are Shia. They may number up to 200 million as of 2009. The Shia majority countries are Iran, Iraq, Azerbaijan, and Bahrain. They also form the plurality, the largest group, but not the majority in Lebanon. Shias constitute 36.3% of entire local population and 38.6% of the local Muslim population of the Middle East including Iran. Shia Muslims constitute 27 to 35% of the population in Lebanon and as per some estimates from 35% to over 35 to 40% of the population in Yemen, 30% to 35% of the citizen population in Kuwait. No figures exist for the non-citizen population. Over 20% in Turkey, 5 to 20 
20% of the population in Pakistan, and 10 to 19% of Afghanistan's population. Saudi Arabia hosts a number of distinct Shia communities, including the Twelver Baharna in the eastern province and Nakawila of Medina, and the Ismaili Sulaimani and Zaidia of Najran. Estimations put the number of Shiite citizens at 2 to 4 million, accounting for roughly 15% of the local population. Significant Shia communities exist in the coastal regions of West Sumatra and Aceh in Indonesia. The Shia presence is negligible elsewhere in Southeast Asia, where Muslims are predominantly Shafi Sunnis. A significant Shia minority is present in Nigeria, made up of modern era converts to a Shia movement centered around Kano and Sokoto states. Several African countries like Kenya, South Africa, Somalia, etc. hold small minority populations of various Shia denominations, primarily descendants of immigrants from South Asia during the colonial period, such as the Koja. <laughs> Significant populations worldwide Figures indicated in the first three columns below are based on the October 2009 demographic study by the Pew Research Center report, mapping the global Muslim population. Persecution The history of Sunni-Shia relations has often involved violence, dating back to the earliest development of the two competing sects. At various times Shia groups have faced persecution, militarily established and holding control over the Umayyad government, many Sunni rulers perceived the Shia as a threat, to both their political and their religious authority. The Sunni rulers under the Umayyads sought to marginalize the Shia minority, and later the Abbasids turned on their Shia allies and imprisoned, persecuted, and killed them. The persecution of the Shia throughout history by Sunni co-religionists has often been characterized by brutal and genocidal acts. Comprising only about 10 to 15 percent of the entire Muslim population, the Shia remain a marginalized community to this day in many Sunni Arab dominant countries without the rights to practice their religion and organize. In 1514, the Ottoman Sultan, Selim I, ordered the massacre of 40,000 Anatolian Shia. According to Jalal al e Ahmad, Sultan Selim I carried things so far that he announced that the killing of one Shiite had as much otherworldly reward as killing 70 Christians. In 1801, the Al Saud Wahhabi armies attacked and sacked Karbala, the Shia shrine in eastern Iraq that commemorates the death of Hussein. Under Saddam Hussein's regime, 1968 to 2003, in Iraq, Shia Muslims were heavily arrested, tortured, and killed. In March 2011, the Malaysian government declared the Shia deviant sect and banned them from promoting their faith to other Muslims, but left them free to practice it themselves privately. Holidays Shia, celebrate the following annual holidays Eid al-Fitr, which marks the end of fasting during the month of Ramadan Eid al-Adha, which marks the end of the Hajj or pilgrimage to Mecca. The following days are some of the most important holidays observed by Shia Muslims. Eid al-Ghadir, which is the anniversary of the Ghadir Qum, the occasion when Muhammad announced Ali's imamate before a multitude of Muslims. Eid al-Ghadir is held on the 18th of Dhu al-Hijjah. The morning of Muharram and the day of Ashura for Shia commemorates Husayn ibn Ali's martyrdom. Husayn was a grandson of Muhammad who was killed by Yazid ibn Muawiyah. Ashura is a day of deep mourning which occurs on the 10th of Muharram. Arban commemorates the suffering of the women and children of Husayn ibn Ali's household. After Husayn was killed, they were marched over the desert, from Karbala central Iraq to Sham Damascus, Syria. Many children some of whom were direct descendants of Muhammad died of thirst and exposure along the route. Arbian occurs on the 20th of Safar, 40 days after Ashura. Maulid, Muhammad's birth date. Unlike Sunni Muslims, who celebrate the 12th of Rabi al Awal as Muhammad's birthday or death day because they assert that his birth and death both occur in this week, Shia Muslims celebrate Muhammad's birthday on the 17th of the month, which coincides with the birth date of the sixth Imam, Jafar al Sadiq. Wahhabis do not celebrate Muhammad's birthday, believing that such celebrations constitute a bid'ah. Fatima's birthday on 20th of Jumada al Tani. This day is also considered as the Women and Mother's Day. Ali's birthday on 13th of Rajab. 
Mid Shaban is the birth date of the twelfth and final Twelver Imam, Muhammad al Mahdi. It is celebrated by Shia Muslims on the 15th of Shaban. Laylat al Qadr, anniversary of the night of the revelation of the Quran. Eid al Mubahila celebrates a meeting between the Al Al Bayt household of Muhammad and a Christian deputation from Najran. Al Mubahila is held on the 24th of Dhu al Hijja. Topic: <laughs> Holy sites. The four holiest sites to Muslims are Mecca Al Haram Mosque, Medina Al Nabawi Mosque, Jerusalem Al Aqsa Mosque, and Kufa Kufa Mosque. In addition for Shias, the Imam Hussein Shrine, Al Abbas Mosque in Karbala, and Imam Ali Mosque in Najaf are also highly revered. Other venerated sites include Wadi as Salam Cemetery in Najaf, Al Baqi Cemetery in Medina, Imam Reza Shrine in Mashhad, Kadimiya Mosque in Kadimiya, Al Askari Mosque in Samara, Salah Mosque, and Great Mosque of Kufa in Kufa, and several other sites in the cities of Qam, Susa, and Damascus. Most of the Shia holy places in Saudi Arabia have been destroyed by the warriors of the Ikhwan, the most notable being the tombs of the Imams in the Al Baqi Cemetery in 1925. In 2006, a bomb destroyed the shrine of Al Askari Mosque. Topic: Branches. The Shia belief throughout its history split over the issue of the imamate. The largest branch are the Twelvers, followed by the Zaydi and the Ismaili. All three groups follow a different line of imamate. File: Imam chart. PDF. Topic Twelver Twelver Shia or the Ithna Sharia is the largest branch of Shia Islam, and the term Shia Muslim often refers to the Twelvers by default. The term Twelver is derived from the doctrine of believing in twelve divinely ordained leaders, known as the Twelve Imams. Twelver Shia are also known as Imami or Jafari, originated from the name of the sixth Imam, Jafar al Sadiq, who elaborated the Twelver jurisprudence. Twelvers constitute the majority of the population in Iran, 90%, Azerbaijan, 85%, Bahrain, 70%, Iraq, 65%, Lebanon, 65% of Muslims. Topic: <laughs> Doctrine. Twelver doctrine is based on five principles. These five principles known as Usul ad-Din are as follow. Monotheism, God is one and unique. Justice, the concept of moral rightness based on ethics, fairness, and equity, along with the punishment of the breach of said ethics. Prophethood, the institution by which God sends emissaries, or prophets, to guide mankind. Leadership, a divine institution which succeeded the institution of prophethood. Its appointees imams are divinely appointed. Last judgment, God's final assessment of humanity. More specifically, these principles are known as Usul al Madhab, principles of the Shia sect, according to Twelver Shias, which differ from Daruriyat al Din, necessities of religion, which are principles in order for one to be a Muslim. The necessities of religion do not include leadership, imama, as it is not a requirement in order for one to be recognized as a Muslim. However, this category, according to Twelver scholars like Ayatollah al Khoi, does include belief in God, prophethood, the day of resurrection, and other necessities, like belief in angels. In this regard, Twelver Shias draw a distinction in terms of believing in the main principles of Islam on the one hand, and specifically Shia doctrines like Imama on the other. <laughs> Books Besides the Quran which is common to all Muslims, the Shia derive guidance from books of traditions hadith, attributed to Muhammad and the Twelve Imams. Below is a list of some of the most prominent of these books, Nahj al Balagha by Ali ibn Abi Talib, the most famous collection of sermons, letters and narration by the first Imam regarded by Shias al Kafi by Muhammad ibn Yaqub al Kulaini Wasail al Shia by al Hur al Amili. Topic: The Twelve Imams. The Twelve Imams are the spiritual and political successors to Muhammad for the Twelvers. 
According to the theology of Twelvers, the successor of Muhammad is an infallible human individual who not only rules over the community with justice but also is able to keep and interpret the divine law and its esoteric meaning. The words and deeds of Muhammad and the Imams are a guide and model for the community to follow, as a result, they must be free from error and sin, and Imams must be chosen by divine decree, or Nas, through Muhammad. Each Imam was the son of the previous Imam, with the exception of Hussein ibn Ali, who was the brother of Hassan ibn Ali. The twelfth and final Imam is Muhammad al-Mahdi, who is believed by the Twelvers to be currently alive and in occultation. Topic. Jurisprudence The Twelver jurisprudence is called Jafari jurisprudence. In this jurisprudence Sunnah is considered to be the oral traditions of Muhammad and their implementation and interpretation by the Twelve Imams. There are three schools of Jafari jurisprudence, Usuli, Akbari, and Shaki. The Usuli school is by far the largest of the three. Twelver groups that do not follow Jafari jurisprudence include Alevi, Bektashi, and Kazilbash. The five primary pillars of Islam to the Jafari jurisprudence, known as Usul ad Din. They are at variance with the standard Sunni. Five pillars of religion. The Shia's primary pillars are Tawhid or oneness of God. Nabuwa prophethood of Muhammad. Mu'ad resurrection. Adl justice of God. Imama the rightful place of the Shia Imams in Jafari jurisprudence, there are eight secondary pillars, known as Furu ad Din, which are as follows. Prayer Fasting Pilgrimage to Mecca Alms giving Struggle for the righteous cause Directing others towards good Directing others away from evil Kums 20% tax on yearly business earnings after deduction of commercial expenses, according to Twelvers, defining an interpretation of Islamic jurisprudence as the responsibility of Muhammad and the Twelve Imams. As the Twelfth Imam is in occultation, it is the duty of clerics to refer to the Islamic literature such as the Quran and Hadith and identify legal decisions within the confines of Islamic law to provide means to deal with current issues from an Islamic perspective. In other words, Twelver clerics provide guardianship of the Islamic jurisprudence, which was defined by Muhammad and his twelve successors. This process is known as ijihad and the clerics are known as marja, meaning reference. The labels alama and ayatollah are in use for Twelver clerics. <laughs> Zaydi. Fiverr. Zaydiyya, Zaydism or Zaydi is a Shia school named after Zayd ibn Ali. Followers of the Zaydi fiqh are called Zaydis or occasionally Fivers. However, there is also a group called Zaydi Wasaitis who are Twelvers see below. Zaydis constitute roughly 42-47% of the population of Yemen. Topic. Doctrine The Zaydis, Twelvers, and Ismailis all recognize the same first four Imams, however, the Zaydis recognize Zayd ibn Ali as the fifth. After the time of Zayd ibn Ali, the Zaydis recognized that any descendant of Hassan ibn Ali or Hussein ibn Ali could be Imam after fulfilling certain conditions. Other well-known Zaydi Imams in history were Yahya ibn Zayd, Muhammad al-Nafs al-Zakiyah and Ibrahim ibn Abdullah. The Zaydi doctrine of Imama does not presuppose the infallibility of the Imam nor that the Imams receive divine guidance. Zaydis also do not believe that the Imamate must pass from father to son but believe it can be held by any Sayyid descended from either Hassan ibn Ali or Hussein ibn Ali as was the case after the death of Hassan ibn Ali. Historically, Zaydis held that Zayd was the rightful successor of the fourth Imam since he led a rebellion against the Umayyads in protest of their tyranny and corruption. Muhammad al-Bakir did not engage in political action, and the followers of Zayd believed that a true imam must fight against corrupt rulers. Jurisprudence In matters of Islamic jurisprudence, the Zaydis follow Zayd ibn Ali's teachings which are documented in his book Majmul Fiqh in Arabic. Mimaf al Hadi al al Haq Yahya, founder of the Zaydi state in Yemen, instituted elements of the jurisprudential tradition of the Sunni Muslim jurist Abu Hanifa, and as a result, Zaydi jurisprudence today continues somewhat parallel to that of the Hanafis. 
Topic Timeline. The Idrisids Arabic Aladirst were Arab Zaydi Shia dynasty in the Western Maghreb ruling from 788 to 985 CE, named after its first sultan Idris I. A Zaydi state was established in Gilan, Dalaman and Tabaristan northern Iran in 864 CE by the Alavids. It lasted until the death of its leader at the hand of the Samanids in 928 CE. Roughly 40 years later the state was revived in Gilan and survived under Hassanid leaders until 1126 CE. Afterwards, from the 12th to 13th centuries, the Zaydis of Dalaman, Gilan and Tabaristan then acknowledged the Zaydi Imams of Yemen or rival Zaydi Imams within Iran. The Bayids were initially Zaydi as were the Banu Uqadir rulers of al Yamama in the 9th and 10th centuries. The leader of the Zaydi community took the title of Caliph. As such, the ruler of Yemen was known as the Caliph, al Hadi Yahya bin al Hussein bin al Qasim ar Rasi Rasids, a descendant of Hassan ibn Ali, the son of Ali, who, at Sada'a, in 893 7 CE, founded the Zaydi Imamate, and this system continued until the middle of the 20th century, when the revolution of 1962 CE deposed the Zaydi Imam. The founding Zaydism of Yemen was of the Jaridiya group, however, with increasing interaction with Hanafi and Shafi'i rites of Sunni Islam, there was a shift from the Jaridiya group to the Sulaymaniyya, Tabriya, Butriya or Salahiyya groups. Zaydis form the second dominant religious group in Yemen. Currently, they constitute about 40-45% of the population in Yemen. Jafaris and Ismailis are 2-5%. In Saudi Arabia, it is estimated that there are over 1 million Zaydis primarily in the western provinces. Currently the most prominent Zaydi movement is the Houthis movement, known by the name of Shabab al-Mu'minin or Ansarallah partisans of God. In 2014-2015 Houthis took over the government in Sana'a, which led to the fall of the Saudi Arabian-backed government of Abd Rabbah Mansur Hadi. How this and their allies gained control of a significant part of Yemen's territory and were resisting the Saudi Arabian-led intervention in Yemen seeking to restore Hadi in power. Both the Houthis and the Saudi Arabian-led coalition were being attacked by the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant. Ismaili Ismailis gain their name from their acceptance of Ismail ibn Jafar as the divinely appointed spiritual successor Imam to Jafar al-Sadiq, wherein they differ from the Twelvers, who accept Musa al-Qadim, younger brother of Ismail, as the true Imam. After the death or occultation of Muhammad ibn Ismail in the 8th century, the teachings of Ismailism further transformed into the belief system as it is known today, with an explicit concentration on the deeper, esoteric meaning of the faith. With the eventual development of Twelverism into the more literalistic Zahir oriented Akbari and later Usuli schools of thought, Shiaism developed in two separate directions, the metaphorical Ismaili group focusing on the mystical path and nature of God and the divine manifestation in the personage of the Imam of the time, as the face of God with the more literalistic Twelver group focusing on divine law sharia and the deeds and sayings sunnah of Muhammad and his successors the Alu el bayt who as Amma were guides and a light to God. Though there are several sub-groupings within the Ismailis, the term in today's vernacular generally refers to the Shia Imami Ismaili Muslim Nizari community, generally known as the Ismailis, who are followers of the Aga Khan and the largest group among the Ismailia. Another community which falls under the Ismails are the Dawoodi Boras, led by a Dai al mitlak as representative of a hidden imam. While there are many other branches with extremely differing exterior practices, much of the spiritual theology has remained the same since the days of the faith's early imams. In recent centuries Ismailis have largely been an Indo-Iranian community, but they are found in India, Pakistan, Syria, Palestine, Saudi Arabia, Yemen, China, Jordan, Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, Afghanistan, East Africa and South Africa, and have in recent years emigrated to Europe, Australia, New Zealand, and North America. Ismaili Imams After the death of Ismail ibn Jafar, many Ismailis believed that one day the Messianic Mahdi, whom they believed to be Muhammad ibn Ismail, would return and establish an age of justice. One group included the violent Karmatians, who had a stronghold in Bahrain. In contrast, some Ismailis believed the Imamate did continue, and that the Imams were in occultation and still communicated and taught their followers through a network of Dawah missionaries. 
In 909, Abdullah al Mahdi Billah, a claimant to the Ismaili Imamate, established the Fatimid Caliphate. During this period, three lineages of Imams formed. The first branch, known today as the Druze, began with al Hakim by Amr Allah. Born in 386 AH, 985, he ascended as ruler at the age of 11. The typical religiously tolerant Fatimid Empire saw much persecution under his reign. When in 411 AH, 1021, his mule returned without him, soaked in blood, a religious group that was forming in his lifetime broke off from mainstream Ismailism and did not acknowledge his successor. Later to be known as the Druze, they believe Al-Hakim to be the incarnation of God and the prophesied Mahdi who would one day return and bring justice to the world. The faith further split from Ismailism as it developed very unusual doctrines which often class it separately from both Ismailia and Islam. The second split occurred following the death of Ma'ad al-Mustansir Billah in 487 AH 1094. His rule was the longest of any caliph in any Islamic empire. Upon his passing away, his sons, Nizar the older, and al-Mustali, the younger, fought for political and spiritual control of the dynasty. Nizar was defeated and jailed, but according to Nizari tradition, his son escaped to Alamut, where the Iranian Ismaili had accepted his claim. From here on, the Nizari Ismaili community has continued with a present, living imam. The Mustali line split again between the Tayyabi Dawoodi Bora as its main branch and the Hafizi. The former claim that at Tayyab Abi el Qasim son of al -Amir by Akami el -Law, and the Imams following him went into a period of anonymity Dar -e and appointed a Dai al Mutlaq to guide the community, in a similar manner as the Ismaili had lived after the death of Muhammad ibn Ismail. The latter Hafizi, claimed that the ruling Fatimid Caliph was the Imam, and they died out with the fall of the Fatimid Empire. Pillars Ismailis have categorized their practices which are known as seven pillars. The Shahada profession of, faith of the Shia differs from that of Sunnis due to mention of Ali. <laughs> Contemporary leadership The Nazaris place importance on a scholarly institution because of the existence of a present imam. The imam of the age defines the jurisprudence, and his guidance may differ with imams previous to him because of different times and circumstances. For Nizari Ismailis, the imam is Karim al-Husayni Aga Khan IV. The Nizari line of imams has continued to this day as an unending line. Divine leadership has continued in the Bora branch through the institution of the unrestricted missionary, Dai. According to Bora tradition, before the last Imam, at Tayyab Abi el Qasim, went into seclusion. His father, the 20th al Amir by Akami el Law, had instructed al Hura al Malika, the Malika queen consort in Yemen, to appoint a vicegerent after the seclusion. The unrestricted missionary, who is the Imam's vicegerent, has full authority to govern the community in all matters both spiritual and temporal, while the lineage of Mustali Tayyabi Imams remains in seclusion. Dar -e the three branches of the Mustali, the Alavi Bora, Sulaimani Bora and Dawoodi Bora, differ on who the current unrestricted missionary is. Other doctrines Doctrine about necessity of acquiring knowledge According to Alame Muzaffar, God gives humans the faculty of reason and argument. Also, God orders humans to spend time thinking carefully on creation while he refers to all creations as his signs of power and glory. These signs encompass all of the universe. Furthermore, there is a similarity between humans as the little world and the universe as the large world. God does not accept the faith of those who follow him without thinking and only with imitation, but also God blames them for such actions. In other words, humans have to think about the universe with reason and intellect, a faculty bestowed on us by God. Since there is more insistence on the faculty of intellect among Shia, even evaluating the claims of someone who claims prophecy is on the basis of intellect. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Doctrine concerning dua. Praying or dua in Shia has an important place as Muhammad described it as a weapon of the believer. 
In fact, dua considered as something that is a feature of Shia community in a sense. Performing dua in Shia has a special ritual. Because of this, there are many books written on the conditions of praying among Shia. Most of Adiyya transferred from Muhammad's household and then by many books in which we can observe the authentic teachings of Muhammad and his household according to Shia. The leaderships of Shia always invited their followers to recite dua. For instance, Ali has considered with the subject of dua because of his leadership in monotheism. <laughs> See also